Hi, welcome to this edition of Garden Guns. Wow, two videos in one day. I might actually get two videos out before Christmas at this rate, if I'm lucky. Um, anyway, what are we here to talk about today? We are here to talk about yet yeah, another rifle I've got on loan from Leicestershire Air Guns. So once again, big thank you to Phil and Tracy. Uh, without them, uh, without their trust, I wouldn't be able to do these videos. I wouldn't get the chance to have these bits of kit that I think are pretty cool and you know I get to talk to you guys about. Uh, anyway, and to that end, what are we talking about today? We are talking about this beauty. Uh, this is the FX Cyclone. Now I think that this is um, approaching a classic now. Uh, it is one of the earlier FX rifles to incorporate their smooth twist barrel. Um, and the smooth twist barrel, for those of you who don't know, is basically from the breech uh, all the way up towards the crown. The barrel is, is effectively smooth bore. And then at the very end, to the last, last, uh, last little bit of the barrel, um, they put the rifling in at that point to give the pellet the twist. Uh, we'll talk more about my opinion on that later, um, because yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the rifle at the moment for, for now. So, tip, tip to tail again. This rifle came with um, a sort of a, effectively a muzzle brake, a sort of a feathered, tw twisted muzzle brake. Um, it did have a little bit of a bark, so I, st I stuck a Huggett silencer on the end to make it a little bit more garden friendly for the neighbours. Um, as I say, we've got the smooth twist barrel on there, coming back 185cc uh, reservoir. I've been running it from round about 190 um, down to about 130 on the, sh on the, on the fill, um, which is giving me round about, I'm going to say 60 to 70 shots. To be fair, I've been a bit rubbish at, at, at keeping track of it. Um, it's an eight shot mag, which has been throwing me. I'm kind of used to everything being 10 plus shots. Um, and having an eight shot mag, you know, I, I, I've been doing more than six mags, but less than 10 uh, before I'm thinking uh, I've got a refill. So, uh, this and this is in 177. The, the website blurb says, you know, 100 to 120 shots between fills. But I mean, that's gonna be depending on how high you fill it. And as I say, I don't, I think it's, it's on, the, on the side, it's max of, oh my God, I need my glasses. It's saying max of 220 bar. I haven't been filling it above 200. Um, this isn't, once again, it's not my rifle. So I, I always go on the, the conservative side of the fills. So, but, you know, as I say, I've, I've been getting 50 to 60 more than usable shots with the way that I've been filling this um, for, for plinking and general fun. It's not a regulated rifle. Um, so you will have to learn your power curve on it. Having said that, I, with my, my experience on it, and to be fair, it's only been a couple of weeks, um, but the bits of shooting that I've done with this, I think it's very similar to my Day State Huntsman Regal, which is unregulated. Um, and that had, you know, a fairly flat power curve. I mean, it had one, but it's still, there wasn't a huge amount of difference. Um, you know, if you, you know, from, from 190 to 130, you know, it was fairly flat. It was fairly consistent in the way that it delivered the power. And I've kind of found, with this one anyway, I've found that, sort of sim similarity there. Um, certainly for the sort of shooting that I do, it's not been massively noticeable compared to some of the other rifles that I've shot, which you really do have a hoiking great big curve on it, which, you know, one of the bonuses of regulated. But having, once again, having said that, for sub 12 foot pounds, do I think that this rifle's losing out on not having a regulator? Providing you spend some time with it and, and learn learn it, then absolutely not. Yeah, this is, you know, it, I, in my humble opinion, I don't think it needs it. Um, so coming further back, you've got a three stage power adjuster here um, and chronographing that at full power, it's given me 11.59 foot pounds, 11.6. Um, at the mid power setting, nine foot pounds, and then at the uh, low power setting, between seven and a half and 7.7 foot pounds, depending on, you know, yeah, bit of variance in, the, in that. 
Um, what else can I say? We've got what FX called a biathlon style cocking lever, which is basically, and it's, it's effectively a side lever. Um, but if you ever saw those biathlon rifles, you know, the, the, when they used to do the biathlon events, if you ever saw them on the TV, they always had those, those side levers, which is why I presume that Daystate, oh, sorry, FX called them that. If I said Daystate beforehand, I mean FX. Every time I say Daystate when I'm talking about this rifle, just sub it for FX. Anyway, um, safety, little safety catch on the side. Um, to load the magazine, basically it's a pain in the ass shooting the videos from this side. You have a, uh, a, a brass slider on the side there, you have to on the top by the cocking but you drop the magazine. Oh, am I doing this all right? This is a faff. Push it in there. Now it appears to be slightly spring loaded. There must be a, I don't know, a leaf spring in there. I think it's actually looking at it. It is part of the rotation mechanism. Um, you have to push the magazine against that and then slide the um, brass slide forward. The one thing you do have to be aware of, because it is spring loaded on that rotation, mag uh, that rotation mechanism, it does have a tendency when you pull that brass slide back to change the magazine to pop the magazine out halfway across the room. It is, well, halfway across the room is an exaggeration. It is reasonably springy though. Right, let's get that out. Oh, gonna, don't want to drop it uh, and bring it round. Okay, so let's talk about the trigger. Now, for those of you that might have watched the Reximex Ixia video that I did earlier on, this is a great comparison. Um, this is what I would call a really good traditional two-stage trigger, and it is, it's, they call it a match-grade trigger that is adjustable. Um, it's got a really, check the safeties off, it's got a really definite first stage, and you come up against a proper hard shelf. Um, and then it's almost like a, a click when you pull through that, or squeeze through that, and you get a really, you know, really, it, it's it's more of a sort of a pressure on the pad of your finger and it such a crisp let off um, a really really nice trigger and it just goes to show the difference between these ballpup triggers and what I would call a traditional rifle trigger although the Rexumex trigger was more than adequate and it wasn't unpleasant to use doesn't have that crispness that I'm used to personally and you know one of the reasons I love the traditional rifle for my sort of shooting, mainly plinking, is because, you know, that lovely, crisp, predictable trigger pull is something that I, you know, I enjoy. Um, so, let's talk about the elephant in the room. We've got a synthetic stock. To be honest, you know, I don't mind synthetic stocks, and I personally think, you know, this is a solid, I mean, I've, 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 been, I've come up with some right tripe, you know, synthetic stocks, and this is, but this is a really nice solid one. Um, but then it's got this weird, weird, but it's got this sort of uh, rubberized, squishy foam grip inlay uh, at the front and on the, on the palm swell, on the palm grip. Um, personally, I don't, I don't mind it. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, I know that some people are gonna absolutely hate it and it, it might be a deal breaker for them but it would be a shame if it was because you know yeah it'd be a shame because I think this is this is a, a, a classic bit of kit um, and I'll talk more about that in the summing up at the end of it uh, on top this this particular rifle has got a, uh, a Hawk um, compact what is it it's a 12 uh, 12 but uh, 3 to 12 uh, by 32 scope, uh, yep, Air Max 30 SF Compact. Um, I might actually do, might actually do a separate video on this scope if I get the chance because I, I've really enjoyed shooting this. This is a, you know, it's a nice little scope, but, and I, you know, I think it'd be worth maybe talking about this independently um, for those of you that are interested. Okay, so I think I've talked enough about the rifle. Let's get downrange and uh, and do the accuracy portion of this. Um, I've not been shooting my best, so and the weird thing is, it is only eight shots in a magazine. So um, yeah, 
I probably I can't hide my mistakes by just putting a load of lead into the into the target. But anyway, so range bit next. I'll be back with you in a minute. Right, so here we go. Eight shots. GSB exact Diablos, 8.44 grains, 4.53 on the head size, as that seems to be my standard pellet. 30 yards. Let's see if I can do this rifle any justice. Okay. There we go. Right, let's go and grab the target and see how we've done. Right, so let's pull this, try something new. <coughs> I'm getting tired of sort of kilting over like that when I do these. How have I done? So, eight shots in there. Uh, that was without a shadow of a doubt me. That might also have been me. I'm not completely sure, but I mean, you know, that whole group, even with me pulling those shots is under a thumbnail under a thumbnail and, and the, I mean, actually, to be honest, even with that slightly pulled shot there, that all fits under, no, pulled shot. Yeah, that top pulled shot, that there, that all fits under my little fingernail. Um, so at 30 yards, you know, shooting a group that size, it's more than adequate for target work. It's more than adequate for, um, pest control you know I'm gonna probably gush a little bit now um, I, I love this rifle um, I really enjoyed the uh, the Rexham X Ixia that I tried um, the other day uh, that I've already done the review on I really enjoyed that but yeah you know I prefer this style of rifle this is you know being a slightly more traditionalist um, and because I tend to shoot, I do more plinking and, you know, I do a little bit of pest control, but the majority of it is just for shooting for the sake of shooting. You know, I shoot targets, I shoot cans, I set up um, knockdowns and, and, and shoot those and, you know, try and get my son to come and join me on a, the odd occasion that he decides to. Um, but that's mainly what I do. And, and for me, I far, I, I far more enjoy shooting a rifle like this and especially a rifle that I consider to be a classic and um, the FX Cyclone I think is a, is a classic it's, it's definitely heading towards the the classic end of the marketplace now um, one of the first you know smooth twist one of the first FX's to come with the smooth twist barrel um, and you know that's been interesting because I've never really shot one it's definitely not disappointed it's definitely as accurate. Is it slightly more accurate than a standard cold hammer forged barrel? I'm not a good enough shot to be able to tell. Um, I've certainly been impressed with it. Um, you know, yeah, do I think it makes much difference? Who knows, I'm, yeah, I'm not good enough for that. Um, I'll let you guys decide if you get the chance to grab one of these. Um, what else can I say about this? Would I buy one? Yes, absolutely, hands down. If I was in the marketplace for a new air rifle, second-hand air rifle, um, I would, without a shadow of a doubt, consider this, because um, this will do do it all. This will, you know, plink down at the club. This will provide pest control indoors and outdoors. You've got the variable power lever, uh, levels on the side. Um, you know, yeah great trigger I think I've already said so yeah I, I yeah I, I, I highly rate this rifle and would not hesitate to recommend this to any anybody out there that, that's got the pennies for it but anyway once again I'm not sure when I'll get the next video out um, so I'm sorry for any delay I have got some actual firearms that I'm thinking about putting a review out on but that will involve setting up at a range somewhere and, and, and doing them 
Um, obviously I can't shoot those in the back garden. Um, hopefully I'll get some more guns on test that will be of interest and, and worthwhile doing a video for. Um, but until then, uh, I wish you all a happy Christmas and a fantastic new year. Um, let's hope that uh, 2023 ends up being better than anybody expected rather than as bad as it seems to be looking like it might be. Um, but until then, please all stay safe. I wish you all the best for Christmas in the new year and uh, here's hoping for a, a really good 2023, no matter what things might get thrown at you. Till 2023, please stay safe and uh, I look forward to making the next video for you. All the best.